Did you know that you can actually develop using lines that overlap just like that? So you can actually see your grid lines or even better, see your line numbers or maybe even better, seeing your grid area names. In this video, I'm going to be looking at exactly how we can do this. It's all using Firefox. Let's get to it. This is so easy to do, and I strongly, strongly recommend you use Firefox anytime that you're doing anything with grid because it just makes your life so much easier, especially if you're using line numbers. But no matter what, you can definitely run into problems with grid. Um, and this is the best way to do, know or understand what's actually going on and why things are going where they are. So the first thing you want to do is open up your dev tool. So you can right click and choose inspect. Or if you want to impress people with your keyboard skills, it's control or command shift C and that will bring up the inspector just like that. Uh, now, once we're in here in Firefox, let's zoom in a little bit on this. I think I can make everything here bigger for the video. There we go. Um, we can actually see there's a lot of different things going on. Um, I have my, it's showing me where I have flex and grid items right here. So it's telling me my body is set to flex and my div, uh, my div class grid is set to grid. Uh, so that's already really cool that it, we can do that. Now, if I actually click on the grid, you can see it's actually showing me the grid all of a sudden. Isn't that really, really cool? And if I click on it again, it turns that grid off. So this is one way you can toggle a grid on and off to be able to see what's happening, which is really, really nice and handy for just really quickly seeing what the grid looks like. Being able to visualize the grid just makes your life so much easier when you're trying to figure out what's going on with it. Uh, now you can also see here we have the display grid and you can see some lines. So if I click there, I also can toggle it on and off right here where I see my display grid. So that's a second area where you can do that. Or what you can actually do, and I'm going to go all the way back up to my HTML element here. It's actually going to show me um, that I have grids. So if you have five different grids on a page, you can actually, they'll have different colors and you can actually control them separately from one another. So you can toggle them on and off separately. And you can see, you can actually display line numbers and area names, which is super, super useful. So let's just turn that back on. So that's the same toggle that we were seeing before. But now what I can do is I can actually display line numbers. Oh, isn't that magic? So when you're trying to figure out what line number something should be going up on, that is just the best thing in the world. Super, super, super duper handy. So that really helps you out along. That's probably the most useful feature to me. But if you have a lot of grid area names, I've put some here that I'm not actually using, but I have one and one. And then it puts this really thick line to show you the divider. And if you had rows and columns, uh, you'd be seeing the different ones coming up on here with these big thick lines to indicate uh, the separate areas to make it a little bit easier for you to see them. So I have one, one, two, two, and then my area three right there. Now I can also extend lines infin uh, infinitely. So they just extend forever. I personally don't like that. It just gets messy for me, but if there might be a good reason to use it, so you could always do that as well. One thing that can also be really useful is you'll have, as I said, each grid in your page will actually have a different um, overlay here. So you can have all of them on or off, but if the color doesn't, if you had a purple background here, it might actually be hard to see those lines. So I can click on that and actually get a nice color picker and choose any color I want. So to me, like a green might work better for my design for whatever reason, and then that sticks and that's the color for that grid right there. And you will notice there is a Flexbox option here. So I just want to show you really quickly, if I go to there, you can see that it will highlight my flex container body. So I can actually turn that on and get similar thing here where it's showing me, um, I have my different areas there and they're all coming up in purple now. So I have the three parts um, and it's showing me the flex items. So my title is one, my grid is the next one and my credits down here at the bottom are my last um, flex item. And then I can get more information. If I click on that, it will select that item and I can go back and then I can get my title if I want and it shows me um, what's you know how it's being set up and why it's working the way it's working, which can be really, really cool um, if ever you need to play around with the flex. But I find personally, I use the grid one quite a bit when I'm dealing with grid, especially for these line numbers. Uh, last thing, just really fast, you'll notice at the top they're positive and at the bottom they're negative just because you can count this way or if you go with negative numbers, you can count that way. So if you want something that goes the whole way across, one over negative one uh, will actually make it go the whole way. Or if we look in here at my paragraph here, um, I actually set the grid column from two to negative one. So it's starting at two and it's ending at the negative one over there. So if you're learning grid or you're making complex sites with grid, I definitely recommend that you use Firefox for your development. And then if you want to go back and test across your other browsers, of course, you should be doing that anyway. But Firefox just makes developing with grid so much easier.
So I hope you liked this video and I hope you learned a couple of things. I'm assuming you're already using Grid in your projects, but if you're not, let me know down in the comments below why you're not using Grid right now. If it's about browser support, it's gotten really good. So don't let that hold you back anymore. There's even ways of using Auto Prefixer in a certain special interesting way. I'll leave a code uh, CSS Tricks article link down below um, where you can use Auto Prefixer to pretty much make it work as far back as IE 10, which is nuts. So if that's something you need, you can check that out in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this quick tip. Uh, big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here. If you haven't yet subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.